Lord this morning. It's good to have everyone here. Uh, why don't we all stand? I'll invite you to shake somebody's hand if you like as we open with this song. It's called How Great Is Our God. Amen. Sing it with us. Love you, Lord, and 
microphone here to share some of your joys and your prayer requests this morning. They'll bring the microphone around to you. Just raise your hand. It's good to see everyone here this beautiful Sunday morning. While Ron's making his way back, I would like everybody to pray for mom and dad. You notice they're not here today because dad had a rough night last night and woke up sick this morning. So let's keep them in prayer. Yes, indeed. Amen. I want to also uh, ask prayer for Rihanna. She's been very sick for the last few days. Oh, yeah. um, also, I have some praise reports. Monday morning, I heard several people who commented that it must have been a God thing. Mm. But it was from the people that I heard it from who really don't really believe in God much, mm -hmm. you know. And so I was just all happy and, and praising God and sharing that. And, I went home and I had a call from my sister and she called me from work, which is very unusual in the middle yeah. of the day for her to call me. She said, you'll never guess what. She said, my husband, uh, when Terrence, the, the one I had prayer for who had the kidney removed yeah. and uh, had prostate cancer, he went, the kidney was healed where they removed it and um, they went to do another biopsy and the cancer is gone. Praise God. And I said, yes. praise, praise God. The Lord. Yes. <laughs> Amen. But had he not Amen. had that to start with, they would have never caught the kidney. Mm -hmm. And had he have not mm. had that, his 40-year-old uh, nephew would not have went and been checked. And his cancer, he had cancer, and mm. it had already started to be like mush, she said. Yeah. And so, praise God, they caught that. Yes. Yes. And she also mm -hmm. said, it had to be a God thing, and yeah. I want to thank the Lord for yes, all of that. amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. Amen. One down here. Pass it on over. <laughs> I want to thank, thank God this morning, and thank you all for your prayers. Um, Katie got her job at the yes, training school. Amen. Praise so, the Lord. Yes. If you would keep her in prayer, please. Yeah. She's not feeling well. She's got a wisdom tooth that's infected, Ooh. and she's dealing with that yeah. this weekend. And hopefully tomorrow that will get taken care yes. of. Yes. Amen. Thank you. Well, bless her. That's good news. We're right in front of you. There you go. I better take out my gum so you guys can understand me. <laughs> <Do that too. laughs> um, my uh, former boss, uh, and he's a coworker now, uh, he had cancer in years past. They removed his uh, bladder. Uh, they removed his kidneys and he had a kidney transplant. Mm. Well, the cancer has come back uh, and they have taken him off the anti-rejection medication. Mm. Um, so he's looking at losing the only kidney that he has. Yeah. And, um, and his, his spirits are very low. Mm. I've invited him to come to our church so that we can pray over him. Yeah. Uh, his name is John. Um, so if you'd keep him in prayer, yes, I'd be indeed. grateful for that. Uh, we're also... And my family having some extreme stress with uh, kids who are coming over from the neighborhood behind mm -hmm. my house. Um, because of my job, some of these kids, I have um, you know, had to see their family members yeah. for criminal offenses, things like that. Yeah. So these, I believe that these children see me as the enemy. Mm. I put people in jail, things like that. Yeah. So they've, uh, They've been busting out my windows and 
coming up really blatantly onto my property. Not all of these kids, but some of these kids in Tom's past since I've been there, I have been so good to them, so it's yeah. especially hurtful. Yes. Um, but we're looking at right now having to move, and I can't afford to sell my house, but I can't live there. Yeah. And, um, so I'm trying to negotiate with the bank to do a short sale or something yeah. like that. Um, so if you guys would remember that, I'd be grateful. I sure will. Okay. Yes, so they know where you live oh yeah. <laughs> yes, they will see you as the person that is helping. Yes, yes. But it is hard. Lord bless you. Go ahead, sweetheart. Thank you for sharing that. I um, just want to thank God for being here this morning. Mm -hmm. um, and I got a couple of prayer requests. Dave and Sydney are in North Carolina. And they'll be coming back this evening. Yeah. Um, just Travel pray for mercies. traveling mercies for them. Yes, indeed. Um, they went to visit Tim and Caitlin and the babies. Yeah. So, um, and for me, I, I don't know what I did to my knee. I was in my kitchen just doing my thing. And oh, then yeah. all of a sudden, it just, every time I moved it, it, it was hurting. Ooh. And this is the knee that I had surgery in. So it's not, I don't, it doesn't feel like the normal yeah. thing. But y'all yeah. Yeah, just pray for me pray that I don't have to go do that again. I don't Amen. Wanna. That's right. Amen. Amen. Well, bless you. Hey, go ahead, I want to thank everybody for their prayers, and I want to thank God. Uh, my daughter Gail got her job. Yes, amen. Um, yes, amen. Not only did she get a job, she got a job full time with benefits and doing amen. something she loves to do, taking care of animals. Yes. So thank you and thank you, the Lord. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Next uh, Sunday, as you know or may not know, is October the 7th, and they are referring to that all over the country as Pulpit Freedom Sunday. It's supposed to be the Sunday that ministers are supposed to have freedom to say whatever they want to say about what's going on in the country. I think every Sunday really ought to be Pulpit Freedom Sunday. Amen. But uh, Amen. nonetheless, what they're doing is they're videotaping the service and sending it to the IRS. Well, they've already come after me once or twice, so they apparently they're already watching our show. <laughs> but anyway, regardless of that, please be here. This is probably going to be the most important service that we have had in this entire year and it's going to be called the State of the Union and Church Address. Uh, if you've ever thought I was politically incorrect before, then you may really get embarrassed this time. But nonetheless, there's a lot that needs to be said that is yes. not being Amen. said from behind the pulpit. Amen. And I'm going to say it if the Lord gives me strength next Sunday. Amen. And we have some guests coming in from out of town that wanted to be here for that. So please pray for the service. I mean, it's going to be one that the devil is going to try to throw a wrench into, but uh, we've got a bigger wrench. That's right. Amen. And uh, a real Amen. big wrench. So pray, yeah. pray for the service. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yes, sweetheart, go ahead. Uh, yesterday, we was at a client's home, and she had asked for prayer requests for their marriage to be healed and reunited. And I'd just like to put Mr. and Ms. Mack on the list. Yes, indeed. Well, bless them. Yes, Stacy. Thank you. Well, as always, i got to be winded. Y'all just bear with me. Come on. <laughs> because God's always given me a good story to tell in church. I like it. <laughs> Shut up, old one. You do it all the time. <laughs> It's funny, Candy, you started off with how great is our God. I have two things yeah. to tell. Number one, they've been playing that song in a little CD player next to that girl Ashton's bed every yeah. day. She's eating soft food now. She's Lord. taking baby steps with weights on her feet Praise and her Lord. arms. They're sending her to rehab in Georgia this coming up week. Then they're going to bring her back and put the rest of her skull back into her head. Wow. She hasn't seen herself in the mirror yet. And then they're going to do the reconstruction uh, surgery on her face. But what a miracle it is yeah. for her to be brought. She cried for the first time. The doctor didn't even know if she'd ever be able to cry again where her eye sockets were busted out. Mm -hmm. But they made her homecoming queen at Rustburg football game. Oh, 
wonderful. And her best friend took her her crown and her flowers, and when she seen it, she began to cry. That one. And the doctors didn't know if she'd ever cry again. Yeah. So and that was a, a praise for God. Yeah. And I have another story. And I won't take but a minute, Dave, but this is very important. I feel like telling God is laid on my heart. It is no secret that our daughter Carol left home in a bad way back in June. And when she left home, she walked away from everything. And she even left her pickup truck her daddy and I had customized for and everything and paid a lot of money for. So I told her, I said, okay, you got the world by the tail and you know everything. I said, that pickup truck's going right in the front yard for sale. Hint, hint, anybody wants one. Okay. <laughs> That's a very nice truck. <laughs> yeah. So I had a young man stop at my front door at 8 o'clock the other night, and me and Chris were in the middle of having one of our heated discussions. And Kelsey comes through the house, and she says, Mama, somebody's knocking on the front door. And I go to the front door, and it's a young guy standing there. And as soon as I took one look at him, I knew that he was on crystal meth and crack cocaine. I knew it. And I looked at him, and I said, can I help you? And he couldn't stand still. He was yeah. fidgeting. He said, I'm here about the truck you got out here in the yard. Yeah. I said, brother, I said, come on in my house and sit on my sofa for a minute. I said, let me talk to you about this truck. <laughs> and he, <laughs> right house, so. <laughs> right so he come in and he sit down and he just started spilling his guts about his life. Mm. And Chris come in and was sitting on the, on the end of, other end of the sofa, and Kelsey was sitting at the kitchen table looking at me. He said, "I don't know why I stopped." He said, "I've seen that truck a hundred times sitting in the yard." He said, "I've went by it every time." He said, but I slammed on brakes and I backed up wow. and I pulled in your driveway. I said, brother, just to come here for that truck. I said, you come here for God. Yeah. I said, because right now you're sitting here so high on crystal meth and crack cocaine, you can't even sit still. Mm -hmm. Well, Chris is on the other end of the sofa going, shut up. <laughs> and I looked at Chris, I said, no, I'm not going to shut up. I said, because God's speaking to me right now to say what I need to say. That's it right there. So he proceeded to tell me that he, that God, he had went to church in jail. He had just got out of Manita prison. He had got his license back. God gave him a home, a $16 an hour job. Wow. He said, you know, God's been good to me. He said, and I went to church the whole time I was in prison. Mm -hmm. He said, when I got out, he said, I walked away. Yeah. He said, I ain't been to church. Mm -hmm. So anyway, to make a long story short, I said, can I pray with you? He said, yes, ma'am, please. So he come and he squatted in front of me and he took me by my hands. And normally when I start off praying, I start off in a normal voice like this. But the power and the tension was so real that my body began to shake. I was just like this. And I was hollering and crying and screaming and praying and rebuking Satan away from that boy and rebuking him out. I mean, it went on for 20 minutes and I just kept shaking and shaking. When I got through, I opened my eyes and he was sitting there and his tears were just running down his face. And I looked over and Chris was crying. And Kelsey said, Mama, I gotta get out of here. I said, what's the matter, honey? She said, you're scaring me. She said, because the whole time you were praying, she said, the walls were vibrating. Mm -hmm. She said, and I, went, I started to run out the door and get in the car. And I said, honey, I said, that's the power of God. Oh, yes. Overpowering oh, yes. Satan and that young Amen. man. That's right. Anyway, I ended up leading him to the Lord. Amen. I told him, he said, I'll come coming back for that truck this week. I said, well, I'm going to tell you something. If I don't ever see you about that truck again... I said, it was all wor well worth you oh, stopping yes. at this house. Right. Yeah. And God sent you here. Right. And he said, man, he kept hugging me and hugging me and crying. He said, I don't know you. He said, but can I please, if I ever need to talk, stop by here and talk to you. I said, you yeah. sure can. Yeah. I said, you stop by. Yeah. I said, but don't you ever bring no drugs in my home. Mm -hmm. I said, because yeah. I'll be looking through the bars with my Bible at you then. Yeah, you go. <laughs> yeah. He's in the right place. And he left. 
And I just wanted to share that story because I thought it was a very, I told my mom, I said, I've never felt that struggle and that power before, but my body was going just like his. And it was Satan fighting. But let me tell you something, anybody sitting in here that's having a battle today, let me tell you, God always wins over yeah, Satan, right. Right. no matter what it is. Right. And no yeah. matter how long it yeah. takes, that's he right. always yeah. wins over Satan. Amen. That's right. Amen. Thank you so much. Praise God. Yes. Well, you know Stacy's stories are always more exciting than ours. <laughs> it's all, good, it's all dramatized and everything. <laughs> it's all I good. just want to say that if you or truly, truly saved and you have walked away. <laughs> we got, just give them a moment, just give them a moment here. Give them a moment here, they'll be all right. <laughs> Get that mic. <laughs> okay, y'all had your moment, go ahead. Okay, <laughs> Good. this is heart touching. You don't oh, do that. Good. Okay. Okay. If you Mom's have on. walked away, if you have not paid attention, if you're playing a game, mm. if you think you can overpower God, you can't do it. Nope. Nope. God will always win. Oh, yes. That's right. Yes. I'm when thankful. you sin, you go to the altar and you ask for forgiveness. That's right. And you keep on. That's right. Until it's given. But don't walk away. Go to that altar That's and right. pray as hard as you can. Mm -hmm. That's right. This altar is for you. Amen. Amen. Yes. Okay, Mom. Okay. <laughs> I love having all my family with me here. I do. It's really cool. No, I walked in the church this morning, I looked over there and I said, that is not, and oh, yes. Richard Durney is here, and I was yes. so glad to see him. Y'all yes, give him amen. a hand. Amen. I'm so glad he's here. Yes. Amen. It is good to have Richard here. I was so surprised, but I'm so glad. Richard and his wife were just pillars in this church, Yes. and they were such good people, and yes. he is still a good people. Yes, he is. Yeah. I'm thankful to I have love him. you, Richard. Love you, Richard. <laughs> give him we're a glad hand. you're here. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. yeah, Richard. <laughs> I'm so glad here. she finally got it. Get <laughs> some more over here. Raise your hand and come to you. One behind you, Ron. And you'll leave it on back. <laughs> we'll just go from front to back. So I want to praise the Lord for being here with Amen. me, my mother. I'd uh, like to request prayer for me specifically because I've lived with my mama since 1994. And you know how it is when you live with a grown son. You oh, know, yeah. Any of you parents who live with a grown son or a daughter, they do things to irk you. Oh, yeah, so I just, I just want you to pray for me that I'll, I'll be able, God will put it on my heart and teach me, you know, mm -hmm. how not to frustrate mom. <laughs> how not to get her upset. You know, it's a little things like running my mouth when she says, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Listen, and I keep going. Mom is good. And I, I just, I, I, I have attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. And having that is like having a thousand ping pong balls mm -hmm. in your mind, just bouncing from one <laughs> thought to another, that. to another, to another. And the doctor said my attention span had grown since I was eight from three seconds to when I was 34, it was eight seconds. I said, oh, that's great. He said, yeah, that's a magnificent achievement. I said, no, 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 20 seconds is a magnificent oh, achievement. Yeah. Eight seconds is only five seconds, and it still bothers me. <laughs> so I want you to pray for me and, yes. and, and for my mom, we'll my you. family, and especially my brother and uncle. Yes, indeed. Okay, thank God you. bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Go ahead, sweetheart. You got a good mom. You do. Amen. Um, I was wondering if everybody could keep my husband in prayer. We're struggling a lot right now. Um, our electricity got shut off on Thursday. That's yeah. why the kids aren't here with me this weekend. I couldn't yeah. have them this weekend. Yeah. And the devil is really pulling on my husband, and mm -hmm. it's pulling, he's pulling him away from me. And we really just need a lot of prayer. Yeah. 
God bless you. We'll keep you in prayer. God bless you. Yes, sweetheart. Um, I had a mammogram um, six months ago, and they found some spots, and they said they wanted to do another mammogram in six mm -hmm. months. Well, I went back and had another mammogram done. Um, those places are still there, mm -hmm. and they found some more places. So we are got to ask Scott to take care of that. I got to go in next Monday, and they're going to do a surgical procedure to do mm -hmm. a biopsy and implant mm -hmm. a piece of metal. And I asked the doctor, was it cancerous? And mm -hmm. she says, I don't know. I won't yeah. we'll put a rush on the biopsy. Right. They said in two to three days. So y'all yeah. could <coughs> yes, please indeed. This pray is for me. Um, another prayer request. There's a little girl. She's six weeks old. Mm -hmm. She's uh, the, the cheerleader mm -hmm. coach for my mm -hmm. granddaughter. Uh, the little girl is six weeks old, and they believe she's deaf. Mm -hmm. okay. So if you could pray for that. Yes, and indeed. also. Um, my daughter Jessica, I have a praise report. She got stung by a whole horde of bees yeah. the other day. I told yeah. y'all. We wound up in the emergency room for many, many hours. She was red from head to foot, nothing but hives and blotches. Ooh. And I mean, I just I prayed and I prayed and I prayed, and they came in, gave her some steroids, and it went completely away. So praise God is absolutely good. Yes, Thank He you. is. Praise the Lord. Amen. Anyone else? We're right there beside you, Ron. Got a couple more. Amen. Uh, next Sunday is going to be a big Sunday for yeah. our church, but yeah. not only for our church, but our, our community, mm -hmm. our state, and pretty much our nation. Oh yeah. Because I'm telling you, after this next election right here that we have, that's going to decide which way our country goes. Exactly. And I'm telling you, people, the direction we're in right now is not the right direction. No. I mean, I don't think anybody can say that. I, I don't see how anybody can look at the world right now and go that we're in the right direction. Yeah, it's but it's very, very important that we hear this message next Sunday. Amen. And it's important that it's important enough, I think, that everybody in here should try their best to bring a friend to this next meeting yes. that we have on Sunday next Sunday. Amen. We got to get as many people to hear this message as we can hear it. Because I'm going to tell you, the way I look at the world right now, and our nation especially, I believe that half of our nation is deceived, yes, and they're lost. That's true. They're lost. True. They can't see the way. It's no surprise, because that's what the book said was going to happen. We, they were going to be deceived. Yeah. Jesus said through the Bible many, many times, be careful that you're not deceived. And there are many ways to be deceived. Oh, yes. I mean, there are many ways to be deceived. And I'm mighty afraid that we've taken line, the hook, line, and sinker, and all. a lot of them have taken it all, and I don't think you're going to change these people's minds. They're not going to change. Well, I, the way I look at it is like this. Mm -hmm. I see it demonic. Mm -hmm. I see what's happening in America right now demonic. Oh, it is. Because there's no way that 50% of this nation cannot see what's going on. It, it, you've got to be deceived to be in that. There's just no way. But it's very important. Let's all try to bring somebody next I Sunday. I agree. Yeah. Let's all bring somebody that needs to hear this. I agree. Amen. Some people really need to hear this. They do. And we need to get the voice out and the message out because November the 6th is coming fast. Yeah. And yeah. after that's done, there's no turning no back. Turning back. It's, done, it's a done deal. That's true. So please keep that in prayer. Amen. Got time for one more. Got one in the back there. We got one over here too on his way, on his way down. That'd be good. Amen. We've got to turn our eyes and hearts to the Lord, and we've got to tell others about that. Yes. I just want to let you know that my um, sister goes back to the doctor tomorrow. Yes. She's yes. still in a lot of pain, mm -hmm. and she's. They're talking about maybe going to UVA, so I'm okay. not really sure. Her grandson is eight months old, mm -hmm. and he was sent to the hospital the other night with a 102 temperature. Come to find out, he has MRSA. MRSA. And I did see on TV the other night that MRSA kills more people than AIDS. Yeah. So Very um, strong. they did yeah. operate on him yesterday, and he's doing a lot better Good. and hoping to go Good. home tonight. Yeah, we'll pray for them. Lord bless them. Got one over here, Ron, on the other side. Um, got a special prayer request that it came in. Uh, for my dear friend Helen, I'll just leave it at that. Pray for one of her dear close family uh, members that are going through some uh, health issues. So if we just lift that person up in prayer.
appreciate that as well. And, uh, he's coming to you. Amen. Go ahead, sweetheart. So I would just like to praise the Lord for being here today. Mm -hmm. And just like the lady was all there talking, I went through about the same thing. Mm -hmm. Got to go back through it again. And mm -hmm. I gave up, you know. Yeah. I really did. And Tina, I want to thank her and mm -hmm. Mother Church because they encouraged me. But yeah. most of all, I had finally had the belief in my God that yeah. he was going to be with me. Yeah. Still got to go through some things. Yeah. I just want to say, and my family, thank them. Yeah. And my brother is really having a hard time yeah. right now. I left this one. I may have to leave a little early. He was having numbness down his arms and all. And I'm worried about it. And I want to just praise my daughter. She got here this morning, and I don't know if she's going to make it home. Her car is really bad. It's missing, and she had to put flashes on coming down the road, and I mean, I can get her home, but if it oh. breaks down, it may be in your parking lot. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, there you go. That's so right. She's so determined to get to church this I'm morning. I'm so glad. And again, I want to thank everyone for their prayers and all with yeah. me, too. Amen. We're going to guys get up there and look at the car afterwards, too. Amen. If you have an unspoken on your heart this morning, just lift it up to the Lord. Just give it to Him. Thank Him. Hey, yes. Please. Yes. Yes. Our Father's house, church. Yeah. 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 We need to pray for this brother and his wife. Yeah, uh, cancers. They removed her kidney, and uh, still has a mass. I believe they removed that. It's part in her leg, which she's recuperating, but it's been a struggle. Yeah. So the Lord pray for them and keep them in, in lift it in prayer. Anyone yeah, else? Do, yeah, we're just fixing to have a benefit for her. Yes, this should be around the first weekend in November. Yes. But uh, keep that in prayer. We're looking forward to that. That's really good. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Praise God. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. Yes. She needs help. Praise God. Praise God. That's what we're here to do, to help one another. Got sure, go ahead. Get the microphone to you. Got one in the back. They're going to get after me. Okay, go ahead. October the 7th is a special day. And I want to tell you that it is a special day because that was my mama's birthday. Cool. And she was born in 1901. And she said, I almost was born in 19 nothing. <laughs> but she lived to be in her 80s and she wow. died in a nursing home after she'd had a stroke and lost her speech. And I uh, went over and sat with her and stayed with her a lot during the time she was in the nursing home. And a lot of the family gathered around her, but she couldn't talk. And uh, I want to tell you uh, something that happened in that nursing home. And I know all of you know Woody Hudson. Now, we've been talking about Woody. He just had his 60th wedding anniversary yeah. party. Um, Woody was in there, and he's my sister's husband. And my sister had a little jar of baby food, applesauce, feeding my mama with a spoon because she couldn't feed herself. She lost the use of her hands. And um, we couldn't talk to her. We didn't know if she could hear us or what, but anyway, this nurse came in and she was very authoritative and she said, I'm going to jerk all the tubes out. And Woody got between her and my mama and he said, over my dead body. He said, they pulled the tubes on my mother and she died. He said, they're not gonna do it on my wife's mother. And they didn't. Yeah. Amen. That's all right. Stand up for our family. Amen. Thank you. Go ahead, brother. Well, I just want to say, uh, praise the Lord for my baby sister's uh, little girl, the Marines, that's from Afghanistan. 
Oh, praise yeah. God, yes. <laughs> we need to pray for our troops and our servicemen and women and for Israel. Let's all stand at this time. Just stand. And I'm going to ask Ron if you pray over these requests. I thank you for sharing them. God bless you for that. Go ahead, Ron. Father God, we come to you here this morning with a humble heart, Father God. We give these prayer requests all up to you, Father God. We just thank you for bringing us here to your, to your house here yes. this morning, Father God. In your precious holy name, amen. As you remain standing, go ahead and take our morning tithes and offerings for our deacons to come forward. But we've got one special for you this morning, and we haven't done this one in a while, uh, but you may recognize it. It was written by a man that used to go to church here. His name was Carl Braswell, and this was my favorite song that he did. It's called Open Up My Heart. <coughs> Word is one of the blast. Come and bring us God's 
scripture reading this morning? Today's scripture reading comes from Romans chapter 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. May God bless the reading of his holy word. Amen. You may be seated. While you have your Bibles, I, I would invite you to turn to Daniel chapter 1. Daniel chapter 1. Yesterday evening, I was meditating and thinking about the scriptures and wondering what I was going to have to tell y'all this morning. Well, I went to bed with nothing. Uh, God had not dealt with me about what he wanted to, me to say, and quite often I'll admit that gets scary because I like to have a plan, and I didn't have one when I went to bed. Well, a few minutes before I woke up this morning about 6 o'clock, I, I had, it was either a dream or a vision. Sometimes I can't tell which is which, but it was truthful to start with. I suddenly walked into this room full of people, and for some reason I knew that they were all professing Christians. And this person comes walking into the room and everybody starts shrinking back and getting terrified. And this thing kept looking at everybody going, I am God, I am God. And every time it would say that, everybody would shrink back in terror. And I said, what's, what's all going on here? And they said, well, that's the devil. And he comes here ever so often in the form of a person. And we're scared of him. And it looked at me and said, I'm God. And just a rage flew into me when I heard that. I, get, I got enough Irish in me. You mix Irish and Holy Ghost and you got a dangerous man. And I found a, a piece of wood on the floor and I broke it over my knee. And I put it in the form of a cross. And I started just going right after that thing. And I said, I ain't scared of you because you ain't nothing. That's right. And it looked at me and said, what do you mean? I said, Jesus is God. You ain't nothing. I said, you see what this is? This is a cross. This is where you got your tail kicked. Amen. And it started backing up. And I said, that's right. I said, nobody killed him. Jesus climbed up on that thing. And he shed his blood. And because of that, I ain't scared of you. And you are nothing. Amen. And it turned and ran. And I kid you not, that felt pretty good. Amen. And I woke up. <laughs> and I knew what I was supposed to speak on. <laughs> right out of Daniel chapter 1. I want to talk to you about having power with God. And not compromising. <clears throat> People today, uh, the average Joe Christian doesn't really have the power of God like people used to. I've heard stories that my parents would tell and grandparents would tell about how powerful the people of God used to be and how it has drastically changed over the, the decades. And what I see basically is that, number one, people have become comfortable. They don't want to stir up anything. They don't want to say anything. They just want to keep what they have and nothing bothering them and just let live and let live and shut up. Another thing is they don't know the word. A lot of the average Joe Christians on the street do not know the Word of God, and as a result, they're wide open for anything that comes along. Yes. And number three, they compromise. Mm -hmm. They're willing to compromise. 
quite often as Christians, we are asked by the world and by the devil to compromise. We are a lot of times asked to compromise on our jobs. A lot of people will lie to get where they want to get on their jobs. Steal from their jobs. And look the other way when something is, that's wrong is being done and, and they don't say anything and then they cut corners on their jobs. Then on top of that, we're even asked to compromise at school. The devil will whisper there's an easier way to do this. Cheat, plagiarize, disobey, or go along with the gang at school. Then we're asked to compromise in our relationships. Dating the wrong people. Let me tell you something, folks. If you're single, don't date somebody that doesn't follow the Word of God and doesn't believe in the Lord and doesn't serve God because you are begging for trouble. You're begging for trouble. Oh, I'll change her. I'll change him. No, you will change for the, for the worse. Don't ever be fooled by that. Do not compromise in your relationship. God has somebody for you. And do not settle for something that the world wants to give you. Hanging out with the wrong people can get you in a world of trouble and just destroy your spirituality. A lot of times we're even asked by the world and the devil to compromise at church and as Christians. Give in to the political correctness of the day. Do not speak out against things that are morally wrong because you're judging. You might offend somebody. Well, I don't care. If the Word of God says it's wrong, it's still wrong. Yeah, it's still wrong. Yeah. People are giving in to disbelief. Popular movement in the churches today to deny parts of the Word of God and say, I don't really believe all of that. Well, I'm sorry, you cannot pick and choose what you want from the Word of God. Either it's all or nothing. That's right. All, right. all or nothing. Yep. Then we're told to turn our head to sin and look the other way just to get along. Yeah. But we've compromised. But the problem is, when you compromise in any area of your life, you lose. You lose. One thing, you lose your testimony. Nobody wants to hear what you've got to say anymore because you're a compromiser and nobody respects you. You make a stand and you hold your ground. Somebody may not like you, but they will respect you for what you believe. That's right. You're not in this to win a popularity contest. Not only do you lose your testimony, you will lose your power with God. Your prayers don't get answered anymore. It sounds like it's just bouncing off the ceiling and that's about as far as it gets. How can we expect God to do the things that He wants to do for us when we won't obey Him? Amen. When we won't do what He asks of us? We want everything that God has for us, but we don't want to do a blessed thing for Him. Doesn't work that way. The only thing that's free is your salvation. You'll lose your power with God. Thirdly, you'll lose your ability to have victory in your life. I've had so many people come up to me and tell me all the stupid things that they're doing and they keep doing and they know it's wrong and they'll go, Dave, what's going on? What's wrong with my life? Why ain't God blessing me? Yes. Lord, have mercy. I'm going to get a sign company just to print me a little thing in, that just says, because you are an idiot. <laughs> that way I don't have to say it. I can just hold it up when they come in. <sighs> it's a simple law of mathematics. You hit yourself on the head with a hammer, it's going to hurt. Yeah, that's right. It's like my mom told me to joke about this little kid that was sitting on the sidewalk one day 
beating himself over the head with a ball peen hammer. A man walks up to him and said, why are you doing that? And he said, because it feels so good when I stop. <laughs> Let me tell you what will feel better. Don't hit yourself with the hammer. That's right. <laughs> Save yourself a lot of grief and quit doing stupid things. And you'll have victory in your life. You can't have victory when you compromise. Now, let's look at Daniel 1. We'll talk to you about a group of boys, four of them, that had every reason in the world to compromise, but they didn't. Verse number 1, in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, under Jerusalem, and besieged it. Here are a bunch of people getting ready to lose their home. The enemy has surrounded their city. And they're going to grab who they can grab and take them away into captivity far away from their home. That's about as demoralizing as anything can be. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim king of Judah into Nebuchadnezzar's hand with part of the vessels of the house of God which he carried unto the land of Shinar to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. Now he spoke unto Ashpenaz the master of the eunuchs that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes. Now this king after he had taken all of these captives he told his servant, I want you to go and pick out the best of the best of the children of Israel. And here is what I want you to look for. And then here is what I want you to do with them. He said, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored or literally gifted. And skillful in all wisdom, cunning in knowledge, understanding science. And such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace whom they might teach the learning in the tongue of the Chaldeans. He said, I want to indoctrinate these kids. I want you to teach them the Babylonian way. I want you to teach them the Babylonian language. I want you to teach them the Babylonian customs. And I want you to teach them the Babylonian religion. And I'm telling you the same thing is being repeated today. The world wants to indoctrinate your children too. That's right. They want to teach them the way of the world. Yeah. They've got a corrupt school system. They've got MTV. They've got VH1. They've got the internet. They've got about anything you want to corrupt your children. And not only that, if you are a teenager, you need to listen to this because it's time you stop blaming your environment for your problems and grow a backbone too. That's right. Amen. And it said, and on top of that, the king appointed them daily provision of the king's food. They're going to get to eat the king's food. Hot dog. And, must, and, and of the wine which he drank. So nourishing them for three years that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. So they pulled these kids away from everything else, their friends, their family, everything, and they, they put them in this area where they were going to keep them pretty much locked up for three years. They were going to teach them the ways of the world, and they were going to give them the king's food as an enticement to do it. Oh, we're not going to make you suffer. We're going to give you the best of our food, the best of our wine, the best of everything, if you'll just get along, if you'll just compromise if you will just follow and do as we tell you to do. Now among these were the children of Judah. Their names, their original names, their Hebrew names that their mom and daddy gave them <coughs> was Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. But now on top of that, not only have they been taken captive, not only are they put in a place where they're going to be taught the ways of the Babylonians for three years, and they're going to be given all of this food and, and wine to drink, they're going to change their name. Let me tell you something. You stay in the world long enough, and you play with the world long enough, I don't care who you are, you will lose your identity. That's true. The world will take that away from you. 
It will take everything away from you that God wanted you to be if you hang in there long enough. And it said that this is what they gave them. Unto the prince of the eunuch gave names. Unto whom the prince of the eunuch gave names. For he gave unto Daniel the name of Belteshazzar. To Hananiah the name of Shadrach. To Mishael the name of Meshach. And to Azariah the name of Abednego. And they are all words that mean something to the gods that they worship. A very unholy name that they stuck those boys with. So in other words, they have no more any relation to God, any relation to the Hebrew traditions and customs. Their names have even been taken away from them. But let me tell you something. If you hold your own, if you make your stand for God, and if you purpose that you will not compromise, it doesn't matter if the world takes you away from everything you know and even takes your name from you, you can still hold your ground as a Christian. And we're going to see teenage boys that were able to do it. It said here in verse number 8, But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, and, and nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. You have a choice. Everybody in here this morning, because you are breathing right now and sitting upright, you have a choice. The devil is throwing everything at you that he can. The devil, first of all, like my dream, he wants you to be scared of him. He wants you to be scared of him. He wants you to believe everything he hollers in your ear. He wants you to back away. He wants you to kowtow. He wants you to keep your head down. And most of all, he wants you to keep your mouth shut. He don't want you to speak up. He don't want you to stir up anything. He don't want you to say anything against anything that's wrong. Just sit right there. Somebody asked Dr. Lakin one time, what have I got to do to go to hell? He said, absolutely nothing. Just sit right where you are. And you'll get there soon enough. And, and so you've got a purpose in your heart. That you will not defile yourself with this world. And that is a choice that only you can make. Your mom and your daddy can't make it for you. Your brothers and sisters, your kids, nobody can make it for you. You have got to decide that on yourself. And yourself. I will not defile myself with this world. Now God brought Daniel into favor with the prince of the eunuchs. Everywhere Daniel went, everybody loved Daniel. Daniel's got to be kind of like Donna. I, I, I don't know what's up with that. <laughs> there have been many times we've been out at the store, been at the mall. I've had people walk up, they go up to Donna. Oh, Donna, so good to see you. They hug her. And they look at me and growl like a dog and keep walking. <laughs> Everybody loves Donna. Daniel's kind of like that. Everybody loves Daniel. And the prince of the eunuch said to Daniel... Because Daniel had said, look, I don't want to eat this stuff. I don't want to eat the king's food. I don't want to drink the king's wine. Give me something else. And the prince of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear my lord the king who hath appointed your food and your drink. For why should he see your faces worse liking than the children which are of your sort? Then he will, you will make me endanger my head to the king. Let me tell you something. The man who was in charge of taking care of those boys said, look. If I give you something else to eat and you present yourself to the king and you look all peaking and you look all scraggly and you look all rough, he's going to cut my head off. That's what he said. The king wasn't playing. So Daniel said to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, he said, prove your servants. Prove your servants. I beseech thee ten days and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. One of the translations calls pulse beans. Just beans. Another translation says vegetables. But it wasn't nothing that an average teenage boy is going to ask for. Yeah. I don't know about y'all, but I've raised two teenage boys and I never had them come begging me for beans. And Lord knows Vegetables, they didn't bake me for that too much either. 
And so this was a tough thing that they had to do because all, I mean, you ever, you ever ridden through the, by a restaurant and you can smell that food cooking? There's a place in Lexington that as soon as you step onto the main drag in Lexington, you will get hungry. I don't care if you just came out of a place to eat because the smell of sautéed onions is all over that town. I love sautéed onions. Run me crazy. And so no doubt these boys got to smell all that delicious food being brought in to all the other boys and all the, the children that were in captivity. And they smelt all that stuff and they said, give us some beans and give us some water to drink. Then he said, let, then let our countenances, our faces, be looked upon before you in the countenance of the children that eat the king's meat. And as you see fit, deal with your servants. Give us ten days. We will not compromise for ten days and then see how much better we do. That would be a good test for everybody in the house of God here today. Take ten days and do nothing that compromises with the world and see how much better you feel at the end of that ten days. You might be in shock at how much more you have improved. So he consented to them in this matter. And he proved them for ten days. And at the end of the ten days, their countenance appeared fairer and fatter. Now I'm going to give you an, a, an old English term. The teenagers have a word called P-H-A-T. It's pronounced fat, but that means it's a good thing. I found out, though, that that's nothing new because on the island of Tangier Island, they speak Old Welsh English. And they warn you when you go on that island that when the, village, the villagers that live there say certain things to you, do not get offended. They said because if you're an exceptionally nice-looking female, the first thing the locals will do is go, boy, is she fat. You say that over here on the street, and you might get your head taken off. Amen. But, I like that. But it means good looking. And in the old English, it said that they appeared fairer and fatter in flesh. Boy, I tell you, I wish that was in, in, in vogue right now. I'd be a god too, I tell you, you know. But seriously. Fat, uh, the word fatter meant better looking. And so their countenance appeared fairer and fatter and fleshed than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. And so Melzar took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and he gave them beans. So they didn't compromise. They said, no, we're not going to do it. And they had every reason to be compromised. They were were miles and miles away from their home, miles and miles away from their family. Nobody was looking. Nobody cared. The place where they was at, guess what? Everybody's doing it. You ever hear that expression? Especially when you're a teenager. Oh, they look at you and go, oh, man, it's cool. Everybody's doing it. Everybody's doing it. And that's what they heard. Everybody here's doing it. Why should you worry? Enjoy it. You're in captivity. You're a teenager. Your identity's been taken away from you. Go ahead and compromise. And Daniel and the other three said no. And God rewarded them. They looked better after 10 days than all the other ones that were doing this, the thing of getting along to get along. And as for these four children, verse 17... God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Everybody in here wants to have some knowledge from God. Everybody here, I know in your heart, you want some wisdom from God. You want to be able to know the things of God and be able to speak for Him at times by reading His Word and being able to interpret His Word and understand His Word. And you want to represent God. Well, if you do, you better quit compromising. Yeah. 
If you want to have power in your life, and if you want to get up and say, let me tell you what God says about something without people laughing at you, then live a life that is separated and holy to God and quit compromising with the world and He will give you those things. The Bible said if you want wisdom, ask it of God, but don't do it with a double-minded mind because you won't. You won't receive anything of the Lord. You need to expect it when you ask. And so these boys were given wisdom. They were given knowledge and they were given power with God because they made a stand and said, no, I will not compromise. Now at the end of the days, the king had said he would bring them in. The prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. Three years of this. And the king communed with them. And among them all was found none. None. Like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, therefore stood they before the king. They got a position in the king's court to be his advisor. And they stood with him in court because they did not compromise and the king respected them. He may not have agreed with them, but he respected them for their stand. And if you want somebody to respect you for your stand, then be true to your testimony. And it said, and in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them, what, ten times better than all the magicians and the astrologers that were in all his realm. And Daniel continued even until the first year of King Cyrus. What's the point, Dave? The Lord is speaking to everyone here today and telling you, do not compromise. Let me tell you something, folks. The day's coming, and it may already be here for you, that you will have a choice of, am I going to stand for God? Am I going to stand for what is right? Am I going to stand on the Word of God? Or am I going to take the easy way out, deny Him, deny His Word, and just go along with the rest of the world? You have a choice to make, and that choice that you make will last you for a lifetime. If you make a stupid choice... It will be so, so hard, if possible at all, to get your testimony back after you've thrown it down the tubes. But if you make a stand for God, you may not be the most popular person on your job, in your school, or even in your church, or in your community. But you will hear God tell you, well done, one of these days when you stand before Him. And it may not be long before we're all standing before Him. So do not give your testimony away. Do not sell it as Esau did for a bowl of soup. You stand your ground and you stick to the word of God and you live for the Lord and payday is coming. Pay, I promise you, every one of you in here, payday is coming. If you will just stick to the, to the word of God, stick to that and do not compromise for any reason whatsoever. Let's bow our heads to pray.